When you board a plane, you think you know everything there is to know about flying. But in reality, there are a few things that you should and shouldn't do while on a plane. Some of them can lead to catastrophic results, and some are simply unwritten rules. In any case, all of them should be respected. One of the things you shouldn't be doing when on a plane is swapping seats. Many people think that if there are enough empty seats, they can simply choose where they want to sit, but you shouldn't be doing this, especially without asking a flight attendant. This is because, before takeoff, the pilot makes sure the weight is balanced on the plane and it's okay for takeoff. They pay attention to where each passenger is seated, then they set the systems to set the right balance. If a passenger decides to change seats after the systems have been set, it can change the plane's balance and lead to a critical situation. For example, if many passengers change their seats and get seated in the back of the plane, it can lead to the front of the plane going up, making it more difficult to take off. So the next time you think about swapping seats, ask the flight attendant before you do so. And if they say no, don't take it personally. Imagine you're on a plane about to take off and the flight attendant asks you to open the window shade. You do it, but the bright sun outside is directly hitting your eyes and you consider closing it. If this happens, do not shut the window shade, especially at takeoff or landing. There's a reason all window shades must be open upon takeoff and landing, and that's because the flight attendants can have a better view of what's happening outside. The minutes spent on takeoff and landing are the most dangerous moments of the entire flight. So with the open shades, they can see if anything goes wrong. For example, they can quickly spot if there's smoke coming from the engines or if there's anything unusual happening on the plane or the runway and notify the pilot. It's also for the safety of everyone on board, as with the window shades open in an emergency, passengers can easily see which emergency exits to use. If you've ever been on a plane, you already know that it can be quite chilly. There are air vents blowing air above each seat and sometimes people get cold and decide to turn them off. However, turning off these air vents can do more harm than good. According to doctors, the adjustable air over your seat should be set to medium or high while flying, so any airborne germs can be blown away before entering your zone. They're set to clear the air in the entire plane, and if you turn your air vent off, you're inviting potential germs to quickly find their way onto your face and body. The next time you get cold due to the air vent, we suggest you smash that like button if you haven't done so already. But no, we suggest throwing a sweater on or using a blanket, but keep the air vent on at all times. The number one rule in flying should be to respect each passenger's personal space as well as the space that's available for the flight attendants. Often the flight gets ruined by another passenger not respecting the space they're given and deciding to occupy much more space than the other passengers on the plane. It's much more difficult when people spread their legs across the aisle that the flight attendants walk in. It makes it difficult for them to fulfill their duties and do their job because they're blocked by someone's feet. The same thing goes when the passenger next to you hogs the armrest with their entire arm, leaving no space for you to rest your arm. I have a guy sitting next to me that thinks he owns the armrest. Next time you board a plane, try to be aware of the available space and how much you can reasonably occupy. You wouldn't like it if someone did that to you, would you? So try not to do it to the person sitting next to you. If you're on a long 12-hour flight, the most amazing feeling would be to take off your shoes and get comfy. But think for a second, who wants to sit next to a person with no shoes on? Sure, it's uncomfortable, but keeping your shoes on not only will prevent you from weird looks, but it'll also be beneficial to you. Each day, hundreds of people board the same plane you're flying, and on each one of them, they bring germs by simply walking on with their shoes. So if you take off your shoes and even worse, your socks and walked barefoot on the plane, you could be exposed to germs from around the world. The plane's carpet has seen everything from vomit to blood and spilled food. And would you really want to walk on that without shoes on? Before the plane takes off, the flight attendants showed the safety instructions that could save your life in an emergency. Even if you've flown many times before, you should never ignore the safety briefing. These types of regulations change from time to time, and even if you think you know everything there is to know about safety on a plane, there could be a few new things that you could miss if you don't pay attention. The metal end into the buckle as cabin crew are now demonstrating. Two secure seatbelts pull on the loose end of the strap. In an emergency, you should be aware of what to do and where the emergency exits are. If you're sitting next to an emergency exit, 
you'll get special instructions that you should closely examine before the flight, since you'd be the one helping people out of the exit as well as opening the exit if necessary. The chance of anything serious happening is small, but you can never be too careful. So next time, pay close attention to the safety instructions so you're prepared for the worst. On most flights, you can wear whatever you want when flying as a passenger, but there's a reason why many people wear loose-fitting clothes that cover their skin. Like many parts of the plane, the seats aren't cleaned between flights, so they're the perfect place for germs to hide. If you wear shorts on a plane, you're more likely to encounter germs by simply sitting in your seat. Also, it's important to avoid wearing tight clothes that could cut off circulation while in flight. Many airlines have dress codes. For example, American Airlines has a dress code that asks each passenger to dress appropriately and avoid bare feet or offensive clothes. As we mentioned, the most dangerous moments of a flight are the takeoff and landing. Because of this, there shouldn't be any reclined seats. One of the reasons is that during this time, if there's a complication, each passenger would have to get into an emergency position with their hands on their head and their head between their legs. Now, if the person in front of you has their seat reclined, it'd be difficult for you to get into this position. Also, another time when you shouldn't recline your seat is during meals. Even if you might not be eating a meal and would rather take a nap, the person behind you might like to eat and your reclined seat is preventing them from enjoying their meal. So consider this the next time you fly and try to remember that everyone eats at a different pace and try to respect the time it takes for the person sitting behind you to finish their meal. Every time you have a carry-on bag with you, you should always place it in the overhead bin. This should be the bin directly above your row. Don't place your belongings over someone else's seat. The overhead bins are designed to fit a number of things, but if your luggage doesn't fit there, you should smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, you should place it under your seat. If you were to place it in a different overhead bin and later in the flight you need to access your carry-on, you wouldn't be able to track where you put it. Also, never close the overhead bin because you think it looks full. This is a job for the flight attendants who determine whether or not it's full. Even though it might appear to be full, there might be some room to fit something smaller. You might also think that you're helping by closing the door, but you're actually making the flight attendant's job more time consuming. Each person who boards the plane usually has the most important things such as phone, wallet, and passport close by. Keeping them within hand's reach during the flight is especially important. It's recommended to also include a list of emergency contacts. If anything happens, the bag should be the only thing you need to take with you as you exit the plane. While it may seem strange to talk about this, it's important to always have these items close by. This will save you time when you're trying to locate the closest emergency exit and you'll be out of the plane faster. Bye for now.